Welcome to this edition of Rally in the Bars. I'm your host, Mass Moose. Even before the Supreme Court and its majority of far right wing fundamentalist justice overturned Roe v. Wade last year, states around the country have found ways to criminalize people for having abortions. But things are getting worse, and a recent case in Nebraska makes this clear. Celeste Burgess, who's 19 years old, was just sentenced to 90 days in jail and two years probation after self-managing an abortion at 29 weeks. To talk about this, we're joined by Emma Raw, who's a staff attorney for Pregnancy Justice, a nonprofit advocacy group that defends the civil rights of women and pregnant people. Thank you for joining me, Emma Raw. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself and the work that you do at Pregnancy Justice. Sure. So I'm Emma Roth. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a staff attorney at Pregnancy Justice. So we are a national organization. We're based in New York City, but we take on cases all over the country, and we provide direct legal representation as well as strategic legal advocacy in cases in which a pregnant person is facing criminalization or other punitive state action because of their pregnancy or their pregnancy outcome, whether that is a miscarriage or a stillbirth or an abortion, or if the pregnant person carried their pregnancy to term and had a healthy baby, yet they're still stigmatized because of the perception that they did something to put their pregnancy at risk. Okay, now, this is like a bizarre beyond anybody's imagination that we'll be having a conversation about the criminalization of a person's decision or their right to choose what they want to do with their body. This has been a long-standing battle uh, for a woman's right to choose. Uh, we've been constantly going back and forth with this country trying to regulate morality. But now we find ourselves in a situation that we have a female, a woman, Celeste Burgess, who ended up in jail for having an abortion. Give us the background on this and, and, and uh, tell us a little bit about this case, please. Sure. For, so let me start by laying a bit of the national landscape and the broader background leading up to this particular case. Mm -hmm. Even though the Supreme Court just one year ago in the Dobbs decision reversed Roe versus Wade and 50 years of legal precedent protecting the legal right to abortion, the issue of pregnancy criminalization is not new at all. In fact, our organization has been working on these cases for over 20 years. And since 1973, the year in which Roe was decided, up until the Dobbs decision in 2022, we've tracked over 1,700 cases mm. in which pregnant people are criminalized because of their pregnancies or their pregnancy outcomes. So in each of these cases, the pregnant person is facing a charge that they would not face, but for the fact that they're pregnant. So we're not talking your average type of possession charge if let's say the allegation is the pregnant person used drugs, but rather a charge of murder or homicide or manslaughter if the pregnant person experienced a tragic pregnancy loss like a stillbirth or a miscarriage or a charge like child neglect or child abuse or child endangerment if the pregnant person carried their baby to term. So these cases are certainly not anything new. Mm -hmm. What there's now much greater concern about is the criminalization of abortion itself. But prosecutors are relying on the exact same playbook that they have been using for decades to criminalize pregnant people. So the case that we've come together to talk about today of uh, Celeste Burgess is a case out of Nebraska where a teenager was criminalized along with her mother because they saw it uh, abortion medication because she was not ready to be a mother yet. She was 17 years old at the time of the incident in question, and she and her mother knew that that was just far too early for her to take on the enormous responsibilities of parenthood when she had her whole life ahead of her. So they sought abortion medication in order for her to terminate her pregnancy. Mm -hmm. The catch is that self-managing your abortion through taking abortion medication is not illegal in the vast majority of states. There are only two states that criminalize self-managed abortion, that's South Carolina and Nevada. So Nebraska is not one of them. 
So rather than charge her with some kind of offense that was directly linked to abortion, they tried to throw other charges at her in order to stigmatize and police what they viewed as immoral behavior of mm -hmm. deciding to terminate her own pregnancy. I let that, okay, this is interesting because we hear, and I'm in I'm in the Washington D.C. and when they when the uh, role was reversed, I'm 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 going past the Supreme Court, so I see the op, you know like. Uh, everybody on both sides of the fence, uh, pro and con, and but you don't in this whole conversation have I never have I ever heard about how they systematically has been criminalizing uh, a, a woman's choice. Why did why this is not on the radar? Why is this not forefront? Because this is criminal in and of itself. When you take and say a person chooses to make a decision, then you say, well. We're going we gonna to criminalize it by saying this is murder, or we're going to criminalize it by saying this is a assault on life. We gonna, we, in other words, you, your criminalization of it is what really what I'm looking at. Your criminalization is the same criminalization that you give a person that goes out and commits a, a felonious crime. Like I go out and murder somebody. You, in essence, saying that if I, as a female or a woman, if I choose to have an abortion, you can charge me with murder. Why this is not? forefront in this in this debate about uh, abortion? It's an excellent question. And the answer is that the mainstream anti-abortion groups know that it is incredibly politically unpopular to admit that their end goal is to criminalize the abortion seeker herself. So the actual person who um, is pregnant and seeks an abortion. And they know that there is broad public support for the right to bodily autonomy, the right to abortion, and the notion that anybody would be jailed for seeking to terminate their own pregnancy is very politically unpopular. So instead, what this right-wing anti-abortion movement claims is that they are only seeking to target the providers of abortion with these criminal statutes. So they say, we're going after the doctors, and they frame the doctors as these baby killers who are manipulating women into seeking abortions against their will. And so they have this very paternalistic framing where they say that they're opposed to abortion because they're actually trying to protect women and protect them from this, this industry um, that is killing their babies. And so it would be contrary to that framework for them to admit that what they actually want to do and what in many cases they've done all along is to criminalize the pregnant person herself. And so you may remember in the 2016 presidential debate between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, he actually said there has to be some kind of punishment for the woman. And it was like, it was as if he was saying the quiet part out loud, because so many in the anti-abortion movement think that, but they won't admit it because they know it's politically unpopular. And then there was, you know, all of the mainstream anti-abortion groups were saying, no, 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 that's not, that's not what we believe. And he ended up walking those comments back. And so it's more and more sort of the fringe elements of the anti-abortion movement who will say that part out loud and really own the fact that they want to criminalize the person seeking the abortion, but it's gaining more and more credence and acceptance within the more mainstream anti-abortion movement. And we saw this in the past legislative session where there were some bills introduced, including one in North mm -hmm. Carolina, where uh, somebody who sought an abortion could face the death penalty for killing a, a quote unquote person. Um, and the ideology that is behind this new wave of restrictions is the notion of fetal personhood. The notion that a fetus inside the womb has all of the same civil and constitutional rights as a living human being. And while in theory, the pregnant person herself also has constitutional and civil rights, the reality is that this right-wing movement pits these two groups against each other, the fetus versus the mother, and is saying, well, if you terminate your pregnancy, you are a murderer, and therefore you deserve to go to jail or prison. I recognize that the anti-abortion right-wing elements, they have been systemic in uh, dismantling uh, Roe. And I think we really need to educate our, 
our listeners on this here. Why is it that pro-choice, because it seems like they're being outflanked in a lot of regards, why is it that they're not able to uh, reverse this, this perspective? I think that the right-wing anti-abortion movement has been incredibly strategic well-funded and organized for decades. Mm -hmm. And this has been a top priority issue for conservatives, in particular, the evangelical movement. And they've been particularly strategic around organizing around judicial nominations mm -hmm. and focusing on the fact that the Supreme Court and changing the composition of the Supreme Court such that there are a majority of anti-abortion justices is the end goal. And that is something that Donald Trump campaigned on from day one. I think, you know, to some extent that, that Democrats were asleep at the wheel, in part because we have won this issue in the court of public opinion. The majority of Americans have supported abortion rights for, for decades. And um, that hasn't changed since Dobbs. In fact, when it's actually up to the voters, when there are things like ballot initiatives, mm -hmm. then frequently we actually prevail in, in getting to pass um, pro-abortion measures or defeating anti-abortion measures. What we haven't been as successful at is elevating those who are protective of abortion rights to high up positions within the judiciary. And so I think to some degree, we, we've really been out strategized by the right wing on that. Um, and, and they are also very willing to do cynical things and stretch the boundaries of the law and stretch the boundaries of, of convention um, in order to accomplish their goal of obliterating the fundamental right to abortion. And I think that Democrats, by and large, are much more focused on tradition and norms. So one example of that is um, the failure to expand the court because Democrats don't want to end the filibuster which they would need to do in order to expand the court. Um, and so I think while we're focused on, on these things like norms, we're not playing the same, the same game. Um, the conservatives who are anti-abortion are playing by completely different rules mm -hmm. than the pro-abortion rights um, side of our country. So what is y'all's strategy in terms of trying to get people to see the necessity to, on, on state and local level and national level, the necessity to mobilize around getting uh, pro-choice measures, pro-choice legislators, pro-choice city council, et cetera, et cetera, and so that we can have or so that the conversation will not be around if a person make a decision to do something that they feel as though it's in their best interest health-wise, that they don't be uh, criminalized and, and charged with a myriad of charges as you outlined earlier. So we are a nonpartisan 501c3 organization, so we don't do any campaigning for mm -hmm. individual candidates. What we do do is work on both affirmatively on promoting legislation that would be protective of the rights of pregnant people, regardless of whether they seek to carry to term or seek to terminate their pregnancies. And we also engage in legal advocacy. And so a huge part of our strategy is exposing these cynical tactics mm -hmm. that the anti-abortion and anti-birth justice link um, of, of the American justice system is relying on to criminalize pregnant people for their pregnancies or their pregnancy outcomes. So every day we are representing actual pregnant people who are facing these criminal charges and we are sharing their stories. I think that the right wing has depended so much on the fact that they have been targeting some of the most marginalized members of the American community. So they have been focused on targeting um, poor people, people of color, mm -hmm substance users, young people, and hoping that, you know, the public won't really notice or won't really care because they're focused on criminalizing such stigmatized populations. And we are not only providing direct legal counsel, but also sharing in the media, sharing our clients' stories of the horrors that they're facing and the complete injustices of the criminal legal charges that they're facing and hoping by elevating these stories, we're letting people know that this, this is an issue that's already happening. The, the right is already criminalizing pregnant people. This isn't just a threat now that Dobbs has been, now that Dobbs was um, 
the Supreme Court decided Dobbs and Roe has been eliminated and the fundamental right to abortion has been eliminated. This isn't just a threat that people will go to jail for their pregnancy outcomes. This has been happening for decades and we've been representing these people for decades and it's time to pay attention and listen. Right, and and has uh, Celeste, what's the prog- what's the status of, of her situation, her case, and uh, how is that playing out? So she was just recently sentenced on a guilty plea. So this is another interesting case where, as I talked about earlier, you know, the charge itself is very rarely going to be something that has abortion in the actual criminal code um, because getting your own abortion medication or doing what's called self-managed abortion is not illegal in the vast majority of states. So instead of criminalizing her for that, they criminalized her with a count of concealing or abandoning a a corpse. And this is a charge that we often see when, um, when a defendant has done something that the prosecution views as immoral, they start throwing spaghetti at the wall and trying Mm -hmm. to make any charge that will stick. So they couldn't charge her with the fact that she terminated her pregnancy because that wasn't illegal under Nebraska law. So instead, they they charged her with the fact that she disposed of the the fetus's body in a way that they disapproved of. And as a result, she was sentenced to 90 days in jail and two years of probation. And what we can't forget here is that this is a teenager. This is somebody who had her entire life ahead of her and who made a very personal decision with her mother that she wasn't ready to become a parent yet. And instead of providing her with compassion and resources, the state decided to lock her in jail and give her a felony that will follow her around for the rest of her Mm -hmm. life because of all of the collateral consequences of a conviction. All right, so going forward, uh, where where do we where are you at right now? Because I'm quite sure it's some more uh, Celeste cases out there. Some more people, women, family members that's making a decision on the well being of their family that's going to be confronted with this. So where are y'all at right now in terms of like uh, educating people and also? Uh, moving them in a direction where they can get a better understanding on how to go about advocating for themselves in this situation. Because this is, this is, 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 like I said, a stretch of anybody's imagination that a family sit down and say, this is what we're going to do with our life. And then the government come in and say, well, but y'all can do that, but. Yeah, I think it's essential that people who are part of marginalized populations who are more likely to be targeted in these kinds of cases, as well as the stakeholders who are involved in these kinds of cases, whether that be the medical providers who way too often report their pregnant patients to the police or law enforcement officers or prosecutors, that everyone who's involved in the system understand these injustices and understand what they can do to prevent them. So we've created all kinds of resources, including something we called our Confronting Pregnancy Criminalization Guide that's Mm -hmm. available on Pregnancy Justice's website that tells each kind of actor involved in the system concrete steps that they can take in order to interrupt the pathway of pregnancy criminalization and prevent cases like this from happening in the first instance. So I think it's vital that people be aware of their rights, but also that people speak out when they work in a field, whether that be in the medical setting, if they work as a medical examiner conducting autopsy, if they work as a criminal defense attorney, as a prosecutor, as a police, as a judge, all of these actors need to understand that this problem is is already huge and is only growing by the day and that there are concrete things that they can do to stop it. Emma, tell us our audience uh, and our viewers how they can uh, stay in touch with y'all and if they want to support any of y'all initiatives, how they become involved. Sure. So um, you can find us on our website at pregnancyjusticeus.org. You can follow us on Twitter, on Instagram, and we we welcome the involvement of um, the public, whether that's through donations, whether that's through sharing our materials, sharing our content, speaking out with friends and loved ones in their own community and educating them about these injustices. As many people as can get involved in securing the rights of pregnant people, um, the better. We'll, we'll take all the help we can get. So I'm so honored that you invited us here today, and, and thank you to your listeners for their interest in this issue. All right, there you have it. 
rattling the bars, Emma Roy. You really rattled the bars today because you let our audience know that this has been an ongoing practice of the right wing to criminalize a woman's choice and a person's right to decide what they want to do with themselves. And we ask our listeners and our viewers to continue to support Rattling the Bar and the Real News. It's only on the Real News and Rattling the Bar that you're going to get this kind of information where when you say Roe v. Wade, you don't think of Roe v. Wade and somebody getting 90 days in prison. You don't think of Roe v. Wade and somebody getting with, uh, going to trial with the prospect of being tried for murder. When you say Roe v. Wade, you don't think of Roe v. Wade and think that somebody had to uh, be, get, go to prison and can't get no bond. You don't think of Roe v. Wade in any criminalization of, of a person's decision. You only think of what, what the narratives are being painted by the right wing that this is immoral, this is bad. But you don't hear the conversation about, no, what is immoral is people telling anybody that if they make a decision to do with their life, that they're going to criminalize because they got the right. Thank you, uh, Emma, and we appreciate you and continue success. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much for watching The Real News Network, where we lift up the voices, stories, and struggles that you care about most. And we need your help to keep doing this work. So please tap your screen now, subscribe, and donate to The Real News Network. Solidarity forever.